Hello and welcome to a special year-end edition of the France 24 debate. I'm François Picard. It's all about how we get around. While rail powered the industrial revolution of the 19th century, the auto assembly line motored the advent of the 20th century consumer society. And now, well, we may remember 2016 as the year we crossed a new frontier. Once again, transportation at the heart of it. Back in September, private taxi service Uber launched its first experiment in driverless cars. Well, semi-driverless cars to be exact. This was in Pittsburgh. Uh, there's still a primate behind the wheel. For just how long is a question we'll be putting to our panel. Fast forward the clock to November and the big announcement by Volkswagen, eager to wash its hands of its diesel emissions fixing scandal, boldly announcing that in less than a decade it wants to become world leader in electric cars and electromobility. Is it the downfall of the combustion engine? Uh, is it closer than we think? Finally, we noticed a mini revolution at the recent Paris Auto Show, behind the usual cocktail of slinky models and big engines, all the talk was about whether anyone, well, really needed to buy one of these big boys. Various shades of ride sharing have makers and consumers wondering if the car owner is already an endangered species. Today in the France Venquette debate, we're talking about the car of tomorrow with us. Uh, Michael Taney, he's managing director of Delphi Electronics Controls Europe. Uh, a lot of people in the audience don't necessarily know what Delphi is, but your stuff is in almost everybody's car, basically. Absolutely. Delphi is a large automotive electronics manufacturer. We're doing uh, electronics for safety, body, powertrain, electrical wiring, architecture, etc. So we're around the world. We sell to all of the major uh, automakers. All right. Somebody who's also around the world is Verena Butt Despus, head of corporate communications for Blah Blah Car. Blah Blah Car is a ride sharing service. It started in France. Yes. Exactly, but we're now in 22 countries, so we do long-distance carpooling. We connect drivers who are heading somewhere for their own personal reasons with passengers heading the same way. And they share the ride, but they also share the cost associated to it, and they share a good time too. All right, it's a 2.0 world for motoring. Thierry Ernst knows it, knows it. He's the CEO and co-founder of a French startup, Yoko Go, that connects your car to the cloud. What does Yoko Go stand for? So it stands for you go, we connect, and we, we offer advanced communication solution for the connected car, and we aim at the autom autonomous vehicle, basically, or the car that talks to other cars and all other, with the roadside infrastructure. Just how connected our car is is a point that we'll be uh, going into because it's super important for, for what we're discussing. And we're pleased to welcome back Nicolas Mélan, uh, energy consultant, uh, with Frost and Solvent, Nicolas Meillon. Uh, Meillon. Thank you for being with us again here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, uh, you'll, you'll cast the, uh, the uh, analyst's eye on, on all of these fast changes. Uh, the France Vent Get Debate on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, our hashtag F24Debate. Yeah, as we were saying, faced with a Dieselgate scandal that's going to cost 30 to 38 billion euros, Volkswagen decided to turn the tables last month with a big, big conversation changer, the slashing of 30,000 jobs and plans by the world's largest automaker to go electric in a big way, VW, to market more than 30, 30 plug-in models by 2025. It's a gamble. Electric vehicles currently make up 1% of vehicles sold. Uh, Nicolas, is, is VW going to deliver the goods? Well, uh, something has, has changed in the last couple of years. In the beginning of the 2010, around these years, you could do electric cars as kind of a marketing tool. Today, with the strong legislation in place by 2020 and 2025, it's not as if they should, they have to. That's what they need to comply to the legislation in 2025 of 75 gram of CO2 per kilometer. They have to sell one car out of four electric. And that will be the case for most vehicle manufacturers, actually. So one out of four, will it uh, be a money winner for them? For the time being, it depends. It still depends on the legislation. As you mentioned, it, electric cars today is 1% of global sales because it's hard to compete with traditional cars. The only way the electrical car will be successful if if you reduce the advantage of the traditional car. I'll give you an example. Take Norway. In Norway, one car out of three electric. Why? Because a conventional car is going to pay 100% tax on top of its price, 
when the electric car doesn't pay the tax. So eventually, for the consumer, it is cheaper, so he buys it. All right, so it, it's cheaper, but only because of coercive measures. Because if you don't have it. But what we see in Europe, a lot of countries are taking those measures. Take Netherlands. By 2025, they want to uh, forbid the sales of diesel gasoline car. Take Germany. By 2030, that's the objective. No more diesel and gasoline car. So it's a strong industry trend, and, and vehicle manufacturers now have to comply. Greenwashing is over. They have to do the job. Michael Taney, uh, you're based in Germany. So, Absolutely. So uh, are the Germans making this conversion because it's the law, or are they making this conversion because it makes good business sense? It's both. I think if you look at the, um, and also looking globally outside of Europe, okay, you know, in, in the United States, it's not CO2 they're regulating, it's fuel economy. So it's clear that every major automaker that wants to sell around the world has to do some level of electrification. It doesn't define, is it a full battery hybrid? There's a continuum of different technologies that will be launched to make this more effective. For example, 48 volt systems is something that uh, Delphi and others are investing in. It's an it's a intermediate cost way to get into the electrification market in terms of um, uh, increasing uh, fuel economy by 15%, increasing uh, or reducing CO2 emissions by 15% by just having a higher voltage uh, net on the, in the car, for example. Uh, you know about starts. And, and are, are you, sorry, you were saying there, are, you're still troubleshooting what the right specifications will be, or you know what you're doing and it's time to move ahead? We know what we're doing, and the automakers are trying to solve a, a careful equation going out for the next 15 years. What's the mix of diesel, uh, standard gasoline, and electrification solutions along this continuum that equals the right overall uh, compliance to the various uh, CO2 or fuel economy requirements? That's where, the, that's where the industry is going. And from a technology standpoint, what's inside that, the technology is already here. It's just a matter of bringing the cost down. So a typical electric vehicle today, the on cost to get that technology, what you're paying for that on cost, clearly is something that uh, is affecting the ability of uh, normal consumers to, uh, to afford this. But going forward, if you think about how the costs are already coming down, think about the car shows and how many, and pretty much everybody is showing these models. You talked about the announcement with Volkswagen then I think you're really going to see that this uh, market is going to take off. And when will be the tipping point? I think the tipping point, let's use 2025 as a clear point, where we think that, and you tell me if you would agree with this uh, statistic, that 10% uh, of cars by 2025 might be 48 volt equipped. According to um, Alex Partners, they did a study, uh, they say it'll be one in five cars by 2025. Does that seem uh, plausible? You know, it's always the, what you include in that. If you include only electric vehicles, if you include... Only electric. They're, they're, saying, they're, saying, in a, they're saying that um, <clears throat> by that time, um, we'll have hybrids and rechargeables. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 recharge, ha hybrids and rechargeable hybrids together yeah. will make up more cars on the road than gas and diesel. Honestly, uh, I would, uh, there's as many forecasts as you have analysts to do them. Uh, so I won't be able to, to comment, but definitely there is some legislation in Europe, in the US, in Europe, it's supposed to be in 2025, about one car out of four, which has to be electric and not just hybrid, but some kind of electrification where you can plug the car. And once again, uh, it's gonna ha there's a couple of roadblocks I want, to, I want to mention for electric cars. First one is electric car for your day-to-day -day trips is fantastic. But the day you need to travel to do 500 kilometers, you have an issue because of the battery size. And even if you have the battery, then you need to be able to charge it. And it's not possible as of now. And last week, uh, German vehicle manufacturers announced they plan to develop a very, uh, it's called ultra fast charging network across Europe with 400 stations by 2020. So we're gonna need that for people to have an electric car as a unique car. Otherwise, that will only be the one they can use during the week, and they still need a gasoline or diesel one to travel, to go in weekend and holidays. That's one of the big problems. The other problem that nobody mentioned about electric cars is that we're switching from a fossil fuel issue to a metal issue, because it uses lithium, because it uses cobalt. And and we're just shifting the problem. It's actually not addressing the problem. Or in the case of, of France, plastic. uranium, because we have nuclear power. No, no, I'm talking about what is in the battery. Yeah, but then, we're also talking about how you power the car. Yeah, and the power, as you mentioned, is important because there is some study which has been done. If you take a regular car 
on the, the life cycle of the car, which include the production and the recycling. If you compare a regular car with electric car today in terms of CO2 emission, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same because 40% of electricity in the world comes from coal. Comes from coal. So it doesn't make any difference on CO2 actually. Farina, I know that in a previous life you worked on uh, renewables and, and uh, on how energy is changing. Uh, does the prospect of an electric car excite you? Well, if we manage to solve the many challenges that have been raised around the table, of, of course it's very exciting. I think that's why so many different brains and uh, parts of the, the economy are looking at how to solve this. Uh, as far as blah blah car is concerned, of course, for, for us it's still about um, filling empty cars and filling empty seats. Um, the cost, I think, of, a, of an electric vehicle, even if it would probably reduce the cost um, of a petrol, obviously, since there wouldn't be any, um, it's still it would still be a costly vehicle if you take all the costs into account of owning a car. Um, and therefore, there will still be very much of a financial interest, I think, for. Um, people to share their seats and share their and share the rights, um, and if you look at uh, the most important impact, which is uh, on on the environment, um, there still seems to be some massive challenges that need to be addressed before this can really be considered a, a sustainable solution. Thierry Ernst, uh, here in France, what's the religion? Of authorities, I know that a few years back the economy minister was talking about putting these plugins uh, that we mentioned there by Nicola in in every gas station. Uh, but in reality, what's going on? Well, we, we for electric vehicle we really face an issue about availability of the the charging station. And mm -hmm. from my perspective, I think one of the issue is the lack of standard or the lack of uh, approved or uh, available standard for for the charging because you you need. You have different requirements in different countries. In uh, France, maybe there isn't a pan-European standard yet. It, it's it's a, it's under uh, it's on, uh, I would say it's under development. It's nearly finished, but uh, it took much uh, longer than expected. And this is also one of the reasons why it's difficult to sell car. Uh, um, I mean, you have different requirements in different countries. Uh, if you live in a in your uh, in an apartment, you have no access to a charging station. You may not have access to a charging station, which is an issue. And if you live in your uh, a residence, uh, uh, in other situation, you you have you don't have the same rec uh, needs. Uh, for instance, you you also uh, could uh, link the charging station with uh, communications. For instance, you want to download uh, DVDs or uh, or if you want to uh, maybe uh, upload a, a, a map or something like that. It's it's it requires communication, and this also requires tenor. The um, hybrids are growing so fast that you have to wonder: Will this conversation about electric cars, in a way, uh, be moot if uh, hybrids are performant enough? I don't think so. I think uh, uh, hybrid is is what is the uh, intermediate. I mean, it's the it's a good way to go to the full electric uh, vehicle. In in bit I mean it's it saves uh, our uh, emission and at least it's uh, it helps uh, to develop the, the technology. In the end, it will be a, a fully electric vehicle. Mike Taney, you agree that uh, hybrids are just a means to an ends, which are electric cars eventually. No, I think um, I think that you'll still see hybrid technology for many years to come. There's still this range anxiety issue that uh, consumers have, and uh, they want to know that they can get to their their destination without having to rely on a charging network. And there's still a delay, of course, when you have to uh, park your car into a charging uh, station and wait for this car to be charged. Um, so I really believe that, um, that you're still also going to see internal combustion engines. Diesel is still has a great place in the market, for example. The technology in terms of reducing emissions and fuel economy is still strong. So we still are heavily investing in improvements in just the basic technology. But the progression on hybrids from 48 volts to the hybrid approach where you don't have the range anxiety issue because you have an engine to charge a battery and the full battery electric, I think you'll still see a range of these products even for the next 10 to 15 years. Nicolas Mayol, diesel still has a future. Yeah, I think um, you know in, in mobility you have to, to distinguish two important things. There is in the city every day and there is the long trips. If you look at long trips, if you look at plane, diesel, if you look at trucks, diesel, Everything is diesel. If you take a car, it's diesel because that's the best efficiency you can get on the long distance. And there is, you don't go in, in the city, so the, I would say the pollution issues are less important. So diesel, definitely, on long trips, is the best, is the best fit. Uh, in the city, though, 
This is where we can get rid of diesel, gasoline car because of the pollution, which is both the air pollution, but also the noise pollution, which is very important as well. Uh, yeah, it's, become, it's become an, a question, I guess you could almost say, cities like Beijing and Delhi of national security. There's so much smog that yeah. how, how tenable can <clears throat> it be? Uh, totally right. Uh, you mentioned uh, India. India is the only country in the world with Europe where they have diesel cars. Only one in, in, in the world. We have Europe and, and India. So they have a problem with those, those, those cars. But in China, you don't have diesel car. You don't. Uh, the pollution in China comes from three different things. Diesel trucks. Diesel trucks which can't uh, go in the city during the day. And then uh, electricity production, which comes from coal. And then the eating and the cooking, which also comes from coal. But you don't have any diesel car in China. Mm. You, the, the car can't, can't go there because it pollutes too much. Uh, on this point, in Paris, you, you know, our city's in a bit of a bowl. And uh, uh, statistics show, because we, we have pollution alert days regularly now, right. uh, that uh, uh, it's people driving around looking for a parking space. Ah, yes. Yeah. It's something that you've been working on. That's right. So one of the things that uh, Delphi has been working on is really investing heavily in the automated driving space. And this ties to our automated driving development activities. So if you... If you think about a smart network, cloud computing, and really providing an end-to-end -end solution from being able to get on your mobile device or in your car and, and find where a parking space might be, and then getting out of your car to go do whatever business you want and be able to uh, tell your car to go park itself, okay, be able, to be able to find an empty parking space with an automated vehicle is the kind of technology that's right around the corner for us. And uh, that's, that's a fantastic opportunity, I think, for consumer convenience. All right, we're going to pick up on these points and look at what it's like to have nobody behind the wheel. When we come back, you're watching a special year-end edition of the France 24 Debate.